The major determinants of success of interferon-free regimens include obviously the effectiveness of the regimens, which is determined by uh, the components of the regimen, what type of drugs are used. Uh, secondly, the simplicity of the regimen, which increases the patient's likelihood of being adherent with it. Now, the simplicity of the regimen is determined by the pill burden, how many tablets is a person needing to take per day, is he or she needing to get up at night to take them, uh, are there problems with taking the medicines with or without food, do they interact with any of the other medications that person is on, and of course the side effect profile of the various medicines, uh, and the less side effects the medicines have, uh, the less often you have to take them, uh, the more likely the person is to be compliant with the regimen. I think the duration of therapy is very important and already we've seen a shift from the 48 weeks with standard pegylated interferon and ribavirin, it's been reduced to 24 weeks by adding a protease inhibitor, but I think the interferon free regimens are really looking at 12 weeks or less and some current phase 2 data suggests that certainly 8 weeks may be sufficient. Uh, in most patients to achieve cure. There are two important baseline predictors of response to some of the earliest interferon-free regimens. And this includes the hepatitis C virus subtype and the patient's IL-28B genotype. Now if you look at subtype, this pertains to genotype 1 infection where there are two types, 1A and 1B. And the regimens which include a combination of two drugs a protease inhibitor and a non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitor, or a protease inhibitor and an NS5A inhibitor. Across all of these regimens, the success is much lower in patients infected with the subtype 1A. And this reflects that this subtype has a lower barrier to resistance to in all of these agents than subtype 1B. IL-28B also appears to be important with these earlier regimens in that patients who have the non-CCR28B genotype tend to have lower responses than those with the IL-28B-CC genotype. Now, the effects of these baseline factors appears to be lost with the next generation of the interferon-free regimens which we're now seeing in a phase two and phase three. And in these regimens, a third agent has been added. So patients are receiving a non-nucleoside polymerase, a protease inhibitor, and an NS5A inhibitor together. And certainly three drugs appears to overcome any uh, impact of genotype 1 subtype and IL-28B genotype. Also important to note that the nucleotide analogues appear to overcome this effect as well. And in the... Uh, the regimens which are, are being now uh, trialled in genotype 1 involving a nucleotide analogue plus uh, the ribavirin or now another second direct acting antiviral such as an NS5A inhibitor or a protease inhibitor. Again, the impact of hepatitis C subtype and IL-28B genotype are no longer seen.